Hello and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th Edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together, we'll go over their history within the game, how they utilize in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week, we're covering another D&D classic with 1st Edition Origins, that being the illusory, tentacled, extraplanar jungle cats known as Displacer Beasts. Often referred to by alternative names such as Der Le Grand or Amlar Cat by non-humans, Displacer Beasts are monstrosities that bear the shape of large black-furred felines similar to jaguars or pumas, albeit with two pairs of front paws, one pair of back paws, and two long whip-like tendrils that sprout from their shoulders, ending in a spiraling of sharp horn-like barbs. They were capable of living to be up to 300 years old, which can make them the perfect lifelong or even generational pet for one brave enough to try and tame it. There also existed a subtype of Displacer Beast known as a Pact Lord, which were overall larger, stronger, and wielded an intellect set to be on par with the sentient races, with a very rare few being capable of speaking a guttural, simple version of common. Displacer Beasts got their name because they were able to bend light to displace their form and sometimes their location, making them hard to perceive as well as strike with attacks. This ability could be further empowered by the use of their magical tendrils, which in addition to being useful as powerful puncturing weapons, could conjure up an illusion of another Displacer Beast within close proximity of the original. Those who were magically educated to discern the real Displacer Beast from the fake one, as the real one would manifest a subtle glow when using this power but those untrained to spot it often fell victim to its deception, especially in the dark and dimly lit areas that Displacer Beasts often frequented. Spells that dispelled magical effects or illusions could counteract this ability, but even without it, Displacer Beasts were still as dangerous as any large jungle cat could ever be, even more so with their resistance to poison and other arcane effects. They could see in the dark, had a standing jump of about 20 feet, and their claws were capable of punching right through non-magical steel armor. Displacer beasts, like most great cats, often played with their food or prey until they were ready to devour it, taking the carcass to a safe, secluded spot to eat in peace. Displacer beasts often hunted in packs or prides, hunting anything that they could kill no matter the size or intellect. Though interestingly enough, they never fought each other for food or dominance within their own prides. Displacer beasts were known to mate during autumn and have kittens during the spring, living separate from their prides while raising their children. When born, Displacer Kittens did not usually have their tentacles, only little nubs that would eventually grow out to full size in about four months when the beast matured. Once that had occurred, they would be taught how to hunt for the next two months by their family, and when the Displacer Beast's magical and biological abilities fully emerged, the family went their separate ways. In terms of habitat, Displacer Beasts preferred forests, plains, and mountains, making use of the foliage, tall grass, and caves to accentuate their stealth tactics and illusory abilities. They were also known to be found on other planes of existence, such as the Shadowfell, where their illusion abilities were accentuated to the point of almost being incorporeal, and the Abyss, where they were often captured and trained by legions of demons loyal to the dark goddess Loth, who we've covered in a previous video. Beyond their uses for the Spider Queen's forces, other humanoids would capture and train them to use as guards or pets, particularly members of the maligned Fey Courts, who many believe Displacer Beasts originate from, or worshippers of gods like Malar, whose clerics hunted and fought Displacer Beasts, as well as owlbears and other large creatures in ceremonial rites, after which they would create outfits and headgear from their bones and pelts. Finally, as a bit of an interesting offhand fact, Displacer Beasts were known to have a distinct mutual hatred of blink dogs with both creatures attacking each other on sight and often fighting to the death. Speaking of which, when it comes to running Displacer Beasts in combat, they operate largely as traditional jungle cats from a strategy or tactic standpoint. Their high dexterity makes them great ambush predators, and as such they will stalk and hide and use their illusions to obscure their true selves in order to get the drop on the enemy, mauling them with claws and barbed tentacles as swiftly as they can before retreating. They're also intelligent enough to see the uses in removing light and waiting in dark places or until nighttime to attack. So the next time that your party builds camp in the forest or mountains, make sure the Displacer Beast that you send their way wraps a tentacle and drags the cleric away from the campfire. That said, if the Displacer Beast ever finds itself overwhelmed by a party, it will choose to flee and save its own skin rather than fight to the death. And unless you have a tabaxi monk in the party, you're not catching that boy. On the flip side, if you're running a pack of Displacer Beasts, I recommend the single target approach, where the pack focuses on a singular, vulnerable member in the group, such as the unarmored wizard or the slow-moving cleric. This will force the party to try and get the creature's attention and peel it off the chosen target, at which point you can then have the individual beasts start taking on the rest of the party, preventing them from actually providing any help to their heavily wounded ally. It's also important to remember that as jungle cat analogs, 
Displacer beasts can climb trees, which they would definitely do so in order to both provide a vertical advantage when ambushing a target, or to pursue pesky ranged characters firing spells and arrows from the perceived safety of their branches. As usual, I've included an action-oriented monster stat block for the Displacer Beast, which includes mainly a variety of secondary abilities to use for the Displacer's tentacle attack, and can be found in the description below. Now, in terms of Displacer Beast-focused NPCs and quests, here are a couple ideas that I've deployed or plan to use in my games that I would like to share with all of you guys. A simple but interesting quest to involve Displacer Beasts is a good old-fashioned beast calling, where a noble, ranger, guide, or some other authority figure hires the PCs to clear out the local Displacer Beast population, be it due to overhunting or disturbing the local ecosystem or for whatever reason. How the party decides this approach can vary, from taking the classic combat approach to trying to convince the beast to move on using druidic or ranger abilities, to maybe even collecting and selling parts to a local mage guild or wizard seeking out arcane components. Overall, it's very simple to drop in and gives the PCs an interesting monster to deal with. Hell, if you would like, you can even introduce a small population of blink dogs to allow the herd to thin itself out from their encounters, much like how wolves are usually distributed in order to lower a rabbit population. Building off of that, another small random encounter that your PCs could have is, rather than finding two fully grown beasts hacking each other to pieces, they can instead find a displacer beast kitten and a blink dog puppy bouting against one another, either playfully or with actual lethal intent, but an inability to actually kill or do damage due to only having nubs and dull teeth. Perhaps their owners are looking for them and can be returned for a reward, or the party can adopt them as pets and attempt to teach them to coexist with one another, despite their opposing natures, which can yield some very interesting roleplay between the party and the animals themselves. And lastly, there's the concept of an NPC ranger with a displacer beast animal companion. A drow servant of Loth who leashed a beast in order to serve them in their endeavors, a red cap or nail box sniper riding on a displacer beast mount, given their small size, or a shadow elf hunter descending from the Shadowfell alongside a near incorporeal phantom displacer beast. All these can work well as PC concepts, so long as your DM allows the use of a displacer beast companion, or for interesting NPCs to either give players quests or serve as foes on an adventure. If you are interested in having a Displacer Beast companion, I highly recommend checking out MCDM's 5e supplement, The Beast Heart, which focuses entirely on a class built around one's pet and can be found in the description below. Even if you choose not to take on the class itself, you can still benefit from the pet system, which can still have immense value for those who want to have pets in their game. In terms of components that could be harvested from Displacer Beasts, their hides were often used as components for cloaks of displacement, and their bones and blood could be used to temper and create something called Jump Daggers, which had a variety of magical uses that we'll go over later on in this video. But their tentacles were often the most valuable part of the Displacer Beasts, mainly due to it being the focus of their illusory magic. One whose experience in alchemical skin grafting could attach a Displacer Beast tentacle onto their body, benefiting from its effects, while a magical weaponsmith could create spiked armor, whips, or even morning stars using the bones and spines from the tentacle's head. With all this in mind, I've included a couple of magical items that you guys can easily flavor as being created from Displacer Beast parts or having Displacer Beast iconography, just so your loot can have a little bit more flavor beyond just its mechanical uses. A cloak of displacement made from Displacer Beast pelts is a lot better than just a regular one made by some mage somewhere. And finally, for our homebrew magic item this evening, we have the Jump Dagger, which is a canon artifact within D&D's universe, but I decided to clear up its abilities for use in 5th edition. The Jump Dagger is a plus one magical dagger that requires attunement and grants the wielder a plus one bonus to all attack and damage rolls made with it. While attuned, the wielder of this dagger is always considered to be under the effects of the spell Featherfall, as well as always having their jump distance be considered tripled. Additionally, the wielder can use the Mage Hand cantrip by pointing the dagger at any object that they wish to manipulate, but they do need to be holding and pointing the dagger with intent. It doesn't just happen while it's off to the side or in their sheath or whatever. And finally, once per short rest, you may use this dagger to conjure a secondary illusory dagger in your other hand as a bonus action, so long as that hand is free and is not carrying a shield. The illusory dagger lasts up to one minute, and while wielding this illusory dagger, you may use your bonus action each round to grant yourself advantage on attack rolls made with the real dagger. You cannot benefit from this advantage if you make an attack with a weapon that is other than this dagger. When not in combat, this illusory dagger can also be presented as a real one, requiring a DC 14 perception or investigation check to discern it as an illusion. If touched by someone who is not attuned to the dagger, it immediately dissipates. I've included the item stat block in the description below, and with that, that's our coverage of the Displacer Beast, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and press the little bell icon to be notified of when future videos come out. If you guys want to follow the development of these pieces and of these videos, please follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, pretty much anywhere else you can find. 
And players and DMs, please tell me how you guys have used and or ran or encountered Displacer Beasts in your own individual games, as well as what kind of things you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.